Hi everyone, welcome back to our FRC Java tutorial series. I'm Wyatt and today we'll be looking at two integral aspects of Java, arrays and for loops. As usual, we'll start off by creating a new Replit project. Today we'll be creating a project to model a calculator that can divide lots of numbers all at the same time. Let's say we wanted to divide all of the numbers 0 through 99 by 3. First, we'd have to keep track of all of the numbers from 0 to 99. Using 100 variables, one for each number, would be extremely inefficient, so that's why we'll use an array. You can think of an array as a list of values. To create a variable that contains an array in Java, we first write the type of all of the elements in, array, in the array. In Java, all the elements in the array must have the same type. Then we write two brackets to indicate that this variable will represent an array. Then we name our variable. Then we write new to create a new array. We write the type of the array again. But this time within the brackets, we have to specify the length of the array. We'll use 100 since we're representing the numbers 0 through 99. In Java, we have to declare the length of the array before we can put any values in it, and we can't change the length of the array later. Next, let's create a for loop to fill this array with all of the numbers 0 through 99. A for loop in Java has three parts. The first part is declaring a variable, the second part is the condition, and the third part is updating a variable. Let's see that what that looks like by writing a for loop. We'll start off by writing for followed by parentheses. Then within the parentheses, we'll write int i equals zero followed by a semicolon. This is the declaration part of the for loop we declare this variable i that we assign the value 0, and this variable i will only exist within the for loop. Next, we'll check the condition. We will write i is less than 100. Since we want this loop to run, well, the number is not greater than 100 since we're using the numbers 0 through 99. This section of the for loop runs every time before the body of the for loop runs, and the body of the for loop will only run if this condition is met. Lastly, we'll write i++. This part of the for loop updates the variable. It runs every time after the body of the for loop runs. Now, to assign each number from i in the for loop to an element in the array, we can write numbers, i in brackets equals i. i within the brackets indicates the index of the array that we will be using. Indices start at 0 and each index is used to represent the location uh, in within the array where an element is stored. We will assign the value i to the element at position i in the numbers array. For example, we will assign 0 to index 0 within the array and 1 to index 1 within the array. Next, I'll show you a quicker way to create an array if we only have a couple constant elements that we want to use. Once again, we'll start off by writing int followed by brackets and then name our array. But this time, instead of writing new int 5, we'll simply write the curly brackets and fill in the elements of the array we would like to use. This might be quicker if we then writing a whole for loop if we only want like these numbers 1 through 5, but obviously it's a lot simpler to write a for loop when we want the numbers 1 through 100. Alright, so this video's turned out to be pretty long, so I'm gonna cut this off here. We'll get into the calculator class in the next video, and that'll turn out to be a bit of a review of this current video as well as some of the previous videos and we'll only get into like a couple small new topics. 
So that'll do it for part one of the for loops and arrays video. So I'll see you guys in part two in the next video.